My guest wants us to learn to pray big. Pray big for your marriage. Pray big for your child. Can you guess I'm already wondering what the next title will be? The author on a mission is also the founder and senior pastor of Austin Christian Fellowship in Texas. Will Davis Jr. has some serious beefs mm. about prayer and guess what, I share them. It is so good to Memoria. have you here. Thank you, it's good to be here. And I guessed right, you have another title coming. We do, Faith Set Free, How to Pray for Yourself with reckless abandon. I get told all the time by Christians, I don't pray for myself, it's selfish. And I know that the person with the most capacity to mess up my life and to wreck my life, don't point at me, yes, it's what? me, uh, it's me. Okay. And to wreck up my marriage and to wreck my church. I need prayer. And Jesus prayed for himself all the time and I bathe my life and my attitudes and my mess ups in prayer. And Faith Set Free is how to do that, coming out in May. May okay. first. Speaking of faith, um, yep. I just want to mention, I don't know how you get time to do all these, but why faith makes sense, uh, reasons you can believe God is real. Yeah. This book is apologetics, how to I pastor a church in a city that it. rejects God. And that is, that is an answer to why people don't believe in God. Austin, Texas Austin, rejects Texas God. is a major trap for every ism in the book, not Christianity. And so I, I taught a class for atheists and agnostics for five years. Mm -hmm. They came, that book's the fruit of it. Very good. Uh, but clearly, <laughs> the pile that wins is the <laughs> prayer theme. Um, why such a passion, Will, for prayer? I was mentored by some very godly men in school who were prayers, and candidly, I'm not a good prayer. I'm a pastor of a church. I love to read the Bible, that's easy. I can't pray. I struggle to pray. And so I felt convicted to get better at it, and uh, the fruit of that work is these books on prayer. Wow. Now, uh, quoting you, you say, um, after the 500th coincidence between events and my prayers, uh, you became uh, absolutely sold out that prayer works? It works. You've done that. I talk in the book about sitting on an airplane and wanting nothing to do with the guy next to me. I'm such a bad person. I was tired. I've been flying all day. I want to be left alone, read a book. And, and, and this guy sits down and he's going to be sent to Iraq and he's having his third beer on the airplane. I'm like, okay, God, you probably want me to talk to this guy. I don't want to. If you want me to, give me a sign. Well, never ask God to do that. <laughs> and, he, and I say, amen. I mean, I say, and he turned and says, so what do you do? Well, I'm a pastor. That opens up the can of worms. Next two and a half hours, we're talking. We're praying on the airplane. The guy in front of me is a pastor. He turns around and joins the conversation. And I'm like, okay, you know, that, that happens so many times. That's a silly, small example. but. Prayer works. You know that. I mean, you guys are here. This ministry is here for one reason. Prayer works. God answers prayer. Now, you have hit a number of my pet peeves, Will. Uh, oh, Lord, just be with so-and-so. <laughs> um, if you are a believer... We did it this morning in prayer. We he, did it. He cannot leave you or forsake you. You are sealed unto redemption That's right. with His Spirit. And so we, we, we pray misnomers so often. And, and another one, uh, just bless so-and-so. Well, what? How are you ever going to know that prayer got All answered? Right, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with praying those things. But I think we disengage our brains when we pray. And we go into that kind of prayer language, the English kind, where, okay, God be with Tom. God bless Sue. God give God a special anointing. Give Bill a special anointing like there's a thing like ordinary anointing. There's not. And I know what that means, but I, I spent some time praying like that. And God said, you know, you can do better. I, pray Big came out of a prayer meeting. We prayed for three hours and I walked away and God said, well, that was sweet. But what did you ask of me that only I can do? We hadn't taken any risks. We hadn't asked anything big. We hadn't prayed for anything that required God to act like God. And I think when I read the Bible more, I, I find limits, boundaries, like pray in Jesus' name, pray according to God's will. I don't find caps. I don't find lids. Like you're asking too much, I can't or won't do that. I've never found God in scripture to say that. And I'm praying, God be with Bill, God bless Tom, kind to prayers. So I got convicted, went back to the Lord's Prayer and discovered what I call pinpoint prayers. They're not original to me. It's not an original concept to me at all. It's scriptural. But in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus did two things. He prayed biblically, he prayed Old Testament concepts, and he prayed specifically. Give us our daily bread, deliver us from evil, um, build your kingdom in our life, those kind of things. That changed my praying. I started praying with biblical background, 
making sure I was praying things that were scriptural. And I started praying very specifically. Instead of God be with Tom, I started thinking about what I want God to do for Tom. Yeah. I want him to heal his marriage. I want him to humble himself and repent of his sin. I want him to bless his business, whatever. And you, you tie that to scriptural stuff and you get this pinpoint prayer that shoots right at the heart of God. And it's revolutionized my praying. I'm seeing more answers, I think. I'm praying with more energy and more faith. I tell you what, it's changed me. Mm. I don't know what it's done for the kingdom. It has absolutely changed me. You pinpoint just don't praying. do any of those mushy, broad, nonspecifics. It's a waste of time. It, when you could be going for exactly what needs to we happen. Ought to, we, we, we let God off the hook. I need to say that respectively. We don't ask in such a way that gives God a chance to be God. We pray too safe, mm -hmm. because what if he doesn't come through? Well, there's nothing safe in Christ following. Christ following is an adventure. It's a faith walk. And uh, the same God who fed Israel for 40 years with manna can answer my prayers. I need to give him a chance to. He can do the impossible. He does it all the time. I don't give him the chance to because I pray too safe. So we've upped the risk, Annie, in my world a little bit in the church I lead, and we're walking by faith, and we're praying like crazy, and it's a blast. And you guys call them big, hairy, <laughs> audacious prayers. All right, let me give credit. What's the hairy about? Uh, Jim Collins wrote a book called Built to Last. It's a leadership book. He talked about businesses that outlast their original leader. They have big, hairy, audacious goals, he says. <sighs> so I give credit to Jim Collins. I sent him a copy of the book because I read that and thought, we ought to pray big, hairy, you said fat, big, I, I hairy, big, audacious fat, hairy, prayers. <laughs> the kind of prayers that uh, I can't manipulate the outcome to. If I can pray the prayer and go answer it, I don't need God. So big, hairy, audacious prayers, I walk away and go, that's something only God can do. And uh, I'm going to have to have Zechariah and Elizabeth, Luke chapter 1, right? Yeah. They're praying in the temple. Uh, Zechariah is doing his priestly thing. Angel shows up and says, hey, your prayers have been answered. You're going to have a baby. Okay, he's 80 plus. Zechariah, Elizabeth is 80 plus and barren. I'm sorry, did they, had they been praying for a kid? That's a big, hairy, audacious prayer. You know where they got that? I think they knew of Abraham and um, Sarah. Sarah. God had done this before. And so this old guy and his wife are praying for a baby. And God says, sure, that's the kind of praying. They can't go make that happen. It has a target. That's it has a, word a target. You use. It has a target. It has a goal, and it's God's glory. It's not, it's not for me. Mm. It if it's all about me, forget it. But if it's building God's kingdom, He's all over it. Now, this might be a little uncomfortable for some people. You know, we hear about popcorn prayers, and they're, they're short, and sometimes they're very spontaneous, just as they happen. But you're saying that we should have a regular prayer time, a regular prayer place, a regular prayer plan. I need it. I need to be focused in my prayers. I, 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 I think you can multitask and pray. You can take a shower and pray. You can drive and pray. Yep. Fine. But God deserves. My wife, Susie, will not let me told multitask and be with her. Mm -hmm. She wants my undivided attention. Okay. Well, Jesus deserves that. So Will Davis needs a guide and a place and a time that's sacred where I pray. And I do my best work there. Again, praying is not an afterthought. Praying is the work of the kingdom. The currency, the, the money exchange of the kingdom of God is prayer. It's how, prayer, it's how things get done in the kingdom of God. Not by works, not by flesh, but by God's spirit. You know what? So we gotta, pray, we gotta yes. pray more effectively. I have to just, this, you know, reading through the Bible this year, it's, I don't do it every year, but I'm really glad that God has given me a hunger to do it this year. And here's something that jumped out at me, just in support of what you said. Look at that Bible. That's a warning. I love that Bible. Do you use that Bible very often? I couldn't. <laughs> That's a great Bible right there. Um, I, you know, you can't give it up when it's part of the warp it's, and woof. It's the, part of the you. New one. Right. I do have one that sticks together. But, you know, this is the second time, speaking of Abraham, hmm. second time he deceived a Pharaoh. This is Abimelech. Yep. He yep. lied and said that Sarah was his sister, which yep. was partly true. He didn't say that she was his wife. And poor Abimelech, you know, everything falls apart now because he has taken this woman. And in a verse, uh, let me just find it here. Uh, yeah, God says to Abimelech, everything's going wrong, and, and I'm trying to think what all the curses that are happening here. And um, God said to Abimelech in a dream, yeah, I know you didn't do this. You, you did this with a clear conscience, so I've kept you f from sinning against me. He didn't have relations with Sarah. Yeah. Uh, that's why I didn't let you touch her. Now return to the man's wife, Abraham, for he is a prophet. 
uh, return the man's wife, oh, yeah. for he is a prophet, and he will pray for you. He will pray for you, and you will live. Hmm. I thought, you know, God could have just said, look, I, I know you didn't mean this, you're forgiven, everybody's going to be fine. He used prayer. He said, you have to go to the man, mm -hmm. and the man will pray for you, and my purposes will be accomplished. Yep. That's God's plan for our lives. As